Hello, hello, another workout brought to you by BU Fitness. So here it is. It is a 10, 8, 12, 6, 10 countdown. So you would do the pale off press for 10. You would do the squat to row for 10. You would do chest press for 10. You would do anti-rotation, reverse lunge, or split squat for 10. And then once you, before you're done, you would have to do a buy-in of a wall sit, plank, or a single leg balance of your choice for max effort time, then you get a 60 seconds rest. And then once you're done with your 60 seconds rest, if you need a little bit more time, that's okay, you may take it, up to 120 seconds at most, and then you'd go into your eight. So you would do eight pail off press, eight squat to row, chest, and anti-rotation, then you would do your buy-in. You can choose any of those each time. So if you, the first time you wanna do a wall set, and then the second time you wanna do a plank, and then the, the third time you want to do a single leg balance, that's totally up to you. So this is our workout today, so let's go ahead and get right into it. All right, so let's go ahead and get to our first movement. Our first movement is the pan off press. So we want to go ahead and make sure uh, we have our anchor point set up around the chest height. I'm going to go ahead and take the stand uh, lateral to the band, so it's on the outside of me. I'm going to go ahead and grab it from the, my hand on the outside, and then I'm gonna grab it from the inside as well. We're gonna hold on to both, both of this uh, wrist and span with both hands here. So I'm gonna grab it from the outside and bring it center. I want enough resistance to where it's gonna pull me, pull me, uh, pull me away or towards the band to where I have resistance. I'm gonna make sure I get my feet set about hip width apart, just like so. My shoulders are down and back, I'm not overextending, my rib cage is down. I'm squeezing my glutes and engaging my core. I'm taking a deep breath in, quick breath out. And then I bring it to center because now I'm set and now I'm bracing. So I'm taking a deep breath in. I'm going to put, push my chest out. Band should be away in a straight line. And it's fighting and I'm rotating away from it, but I'm fighting that resistance the whole time. Then bring it back in. One, two, and three. So we want to do these nice and soft. Deep breath in. Put breath out. Another deep breath in. Shoulders down and back. Press it out, keep that core nice and tight. Bring it back in. One more time, squeezing the glutes. Shoulders down and back. And then we will go ahead and do the other side. So I come on the other side. Get my footing set where I should be at. I'm going to take a deep breath in. Deep breath out. To brace, make sure my core is on uh, nice and tight. I'm keeping my glutes nice and tight. Keep my rib cage down. My shoulders are back. Like so. Can I get it then? Bring it back. Press them out, squeezing all that air out, bring it back in. Bracing. Bring it back in. One more time. And bring it back in. And it's going to fight me the whole time, so I'm trying to fight that resistance. I want to make sure I'm nice and solid and keep my hips nice and square. So it should be like I'm pressing out in the middle and bringing it back in. So I want you to think of the middle of your chest, the, the, the mark that you want to aim for that resistance band. Both your hands should have the same amount of resistance on each side. If it feels like it's pulling, just pull a little bit more of the resistance on the other side and hold it in the center the best you can. Remember, shoulders away from the ears. We don't want to be shrugging up. We want those shoulders down and away from the ears. Nice and compact, so don't pack, but we don't want to be too overextended. So you want to be about right in the middle. So if you overextend here, bring your rib cage down and shoulders down. So your, your lats should be able to engage in that movement the whole time as well. So it's, a, it's nice, it's good for the, the midsection, the midline there, and it's really good uh, abdominal movement. It's good for stability. So if you have a hard time like stabilizing your hips, or if you just need that deep core work, the pillow press is perfect for you. And like I said, you don't have to do it super fast. I would say if you want to do tempo work, so you would start off here, we get engaged, we go one, two, three seconds, breathe out, one, two, three seconds in, hold for one second, and then go back into the one, two, three second in, one second home, one, two, three, back in. So it's just a, a good way to figure out the tempo, because tempo's Temple works really good for when you're first starting off to be able to really understand technique and how to actually stabilize those movements so then you can move to harder movements and, and get stronger with control. 
So let's go ahead and get to our next exercise. We have our squat to row. So let's get into it. All right, so our next movement is called uh, squat to row. So I'm gonna start off in the rowing position already. Shoulders are down and back. I keep my rib cage down and squeeze my glutes. I'm making sure my hips are about between uh, hip to shoulder width apart. If you have to squat a little bit wider, if you have trouble with your hips, that's fine. Make sure your feet are slightly straight on. You can have them slightly out too, but the better, the more straight on, the better your knees will track over your uh, feet. Because we always want the knees and the feet to line up. So they're down back. Make sure my core is nice and tight. Can you put that? I'm going to squat down as low as I can. I'm just going to come to here, squat. Make sure I'm not overextending. I keep my ribcage down. My hips are back. I'm driving my knees out at the same angle of my, uh, my feet there. Squat. And then I'm going to roll in when I come up. Keep breath in. I'm going to squat down. Keep the, keep the arms about shoulder width apart. I'm not bringing them too high, not too low. Keeping my uh, shoulders pretty neutral. And then I'm bringing it back in. Breathing out when I bring those ro rowing in. We're going to do that rotation. So when you rotate with the row, I want you to think about squeezing those lats down and back as well. So we're keeping constant tension. We're coming up, coming down, squatting, and then pulling it in, squeezing, getting those lats fired, holding, and then we get back into it. Breathing, holding the breath, and then we breathe out, and then come back in again. Hips back, we're spreading the floor of the feet, keeping the glutes active, we're driving the feet in the ground, and coming back up. Keeping that right cage down. All right, so key points of that, make sure your hips are about, or your feet are about hips to shoulder width apart. We're coming up, we're keeping the shoulders down the back, we're keeping the uh, glutes fired, pushing into the ground. So we're actively pushing. And you can even almost twist your feet out, like locking them or screwing, screwing them in the ground. I'm tracking my hips back. My knees should follow the same line as my feet. Coming in, and then I squeeze and make sure my elbows glide against my side so I can activate the lats and squeeze them down and back. Okay? So that is the squat to roll. Same thing with the peel off press if you'd like to do tempo work. The tempo work would go one, or one, that's how we're starting. One. One, two, three. One, one, two, three. <sighs> Breathe out at the top. Deep breath in. One, one, two, three. One, one, two, three. <sighs> Deep breath out. Okay? So you would do about, depending on what, how far you go, you do your rep team 10 all the way through 8, 12. How far you want to go with this workout. If you only want to do two sets of it, that's fine as long as you're getting a good workout in. So let's go ahead and get to the next movement. All right, so the next movement that we're doing is the chest press plus. Adding that plus in there to kind of help with the shoulder, shoulder health. So in the setup, I'm going to bring it behind. I'm having this about at hip to knee level. So I can go from the floor up with the bands. I'm having it overhand. I'm going to start off a little bit. You want some resistance. You want the shoulders down the back. About shoulder width. I want to line it up a little bit with the chest here. I'm going to keep my ribcage down. And have a slight bend in the knees because we don't ever want to fully lock our knees. You can pass out that way. Take a deep breath in. Quick breath out. Just to brace them, we're going to take another deep breath in. I'm actively pushing away from myself. Through and keep my shoulders down and back. And then I'm going to do a plus. So I'm going to extend all the way through the scat. And then bring it back down, and then bring it back to the starting position, right at the sides. Deep breath in. One extra. Out. Down. And back. You want to make sure to keep that chin in too. So neutral, neutral, neutral uh, head position. And that plus. Push the shoulders up and back. Put them back into the shoulder. Um, shoulder. shoulder position, and then we bring it back here, just like so. If you want to do a little bit faster, we go one, two, three, one, 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 two, three, nice and controlled the whole time. Make sure you're looking forward to it. Okay. <laughs> so that is the chest press. You want to be able to feel it in the, the pec uh, minor and the pec major as well, and we're pressing through. 
We're pulling back. We're actively pulling those shoulders back and down. We don't want to be overextending. Pushing that chest out, that rotation should be down, and your, your ribs should be aligned with your, your abdominals as well. Uh, slight bend in the knees. We're squeezing the glutes. We don't want to be, we want to have those hips nice and straight on. We're push, pushing away from ourselves. And that little bit extra, if you see, see how I'm bringing that, the, the shoulders off the scap? Bring it back in the starting position, and then I control it all the way back down. So I want my elbows to always line up with my wrists as well. I don't want my wrists in a weird position. We always want that nice and lined up. So let's go ahead and get to our anti-rotation reverse lunge. Let's get right into it. Alright, so next we have our anti-rotation press with reverse lunge or split squat. So I'm going to go ahead and demo the split squat first, and then I'll get to the reverse lunge. So just like the panel press, I want it about chest height. Right, centered in the middle, you always want to keep it nice and centered. I'm going to make sure I keep my core nice and tight. Before I even get set up, I'm going to brace, deep breath in. But without brace, I'm going to make sure my feet are underneath my hips and they're nice and straight on and I have my glutes already activated. I'm going to bring my leg out, just like so. So I have my, so I'm getting to a split position right now. My foot is nice and centered on the ground. I'm making sure I'm having full, full foot contact. My knee's not trailing too far over. I'm keeping it about a 90 degree angle. And then I have my, uh, my back leg just sitting in a split squat position. So I'm just gonna do little, little pulses all the way down. So I'm coming up and I'm gonna get into the press. So my repeat is down, get with it, get out. I'm sinking down on that hip, stabilizing, and then coming back up. Hold, one, two, three, one, two, three, in. And if you need to do a little bit less deep, that's okay. Come back up. If that's as far as you can go, that's fine. We're just thinking about quality movements and getting movements in our hips. Keep with it. Shoulders down and back, or keeps down. Squeeze, hold, come back in, and so on. And then once you get into the reverse lunge, you can come up. Once you're ready for it, Take a deep breath in, come down, and we push away, squeeze away, come back up, bring that foot in, nice and controlled again, deep breath in, pushing away, controlling it all the way through that movement, then come back up, bring that foot in. So my feet are, or my hips are, or <laughs> my feet are hips width apart with that reverse lunge, I'm bringing my knee, making sure my knee is lined up with my hip the best I can. Keeping, you can, you're uh, trying to keep a 90 degree angle the best you can with your lunge. If you can't, if it goes over a little bit, that's okay too. You just don't want it to be way over. It's going to put your hips in a weird position that you don't want. So I want to make sure I'm actively driving, whoop, driving my, my feet into the ground, spreading the floor with my feet. I'm squeezing my glutes. I'm driving my uh, feet into the floor. I'm staying nice and stable, keeping the ribcage down and the overextending. And then when I come up, I'm pressing out, I'm pushing off myself. I'm nice and controlled, and I'm keeping nice and tight in all those areas. So after you're done with your reverse lunge, you, uh, for your buy in, you gotta do a buy in before you can get a rest. You gotta do a wall sit, a plank, or a single leg. So I'll demonstrate the wall sit, the plank, and the single leg now. So we're gonna just do the single leg. If you need to hold on to something, that's fine. But I just want you to do toe touches. So we're going to come up. We're just going to figure out how to balance. If this is as much as you can, that's fine. We're just going to hold and balance. Clasp your hands in the middle. I want you to actively think you're driving and ripping your, uh, the floor with your feet. We're spreading the, the, our toes apart. Pushing actively into the ground. And I, I, you can bring that foot in the front if you feel like it's a little bit easier to, to counterbalance or just have it tucked in at the side. And you just hold for as long as you can. If you want to make it a little bit harder, you can do toe taps. Come up, the side, come out, tap as far as you can go, and then we keep that leg kind of straight, keep it straight, and then we hinge. So up, so we're keeping that leg that we're balancing on straight, and we're just working on that hinge of our hips. Coming in, nice and controlled, and tap. So if this is as much as you can do, that's okay. Just make sure you're getting a little bit of that hip hinge, and we're locking that leg out. Coming up, good. Well, not locking out, you want somewhat of a soft knee, but you want to actively be pushing into the ground with the feet. And then we would go to the other side, you would hold, so you do it on both sides. We're hold, hold, hold in, gripping the floor, make sure we keep your hips nice and even, and then I reach. 
Come through, two, come back, and three. Just like so, and we're hip hinging. And for the plank, uh, you can, if you need to, you can also do this uh, planks on the wall. If you feel like you would like to try the plank, we can do it on the floor. So I'm gonna demo it on the floor and then we'll demo it, dem demo this on the wall. So a plank, come down, do it on the elbows or high up. I wanna do high up, get my hands underneath my shoulders, just like so. I'm sprawling my fingers out to grip the floor, just like we did with our feet. Screwing my arms in, inward. I'm gonna go ahead and squeeze the glute, get my, my feet set and squeeze my glute. I'm gonna bring my other leg in, squeeze them together, bring everything in, bring my shoulders set, and then I'm just holding. Squeezing, belly button the spine, I'm still breathing, and I'm driving my hands down to the floor and towards my center, so I'm pulling in the whole time too, to create that resistance, to create that torque. So I really have to engage my um, rectus feet, or uh, my uh, uh, rectus abdominis there. So I'm gonna hold that for as long as I can. And then if uh, the next round you wanna go ahead and do wall sets, we will go ahead and do a wall set. So I'm gonna come over here. We'll go over a wall set for you guys. Just like so. Okay, so for a wall set, I'm about a foot or two away from the wall. I get into a squatting position. I want to make sure my knees line up with my toes. I don't want my uh, knees driving out where my toes are kind of uh, pronating, and, uh, pronating in. So sitting down in that center, you can go about, if you need to be a little bit higher than 90 degrees, that's fine, just work your way into that position. I want to make sure I keep a, a neutral uh, lower lumbar spine. I don't want it to be completely compressed against the wall. I want my shoulders down and back. I kind of pin my chin in, my head. You can push your hands in actively towards the wall to hold. If you, and once you get used to it, you can go a little bit deeper. Just like so, keep that rib cage down. And then we're just holding. Keep that uh, belly button spine. I'm actively driving my hands in so I can keep racing and I'm driving my feet into the ground. I'm slightly driving my knees out so it's a full body movement. So I'm just holding as long as I can. Hold, hold, hold. And then when I come there, I come back up and then get into the next round. So the first one would be 10 ball movements. And then I do my buy-in and my max effort uh, time for either a wall set, a single leg balance, or a plank. And then I go into my eight all the way through and then do your buy-in, do your 12 buy-in. If you want to keep going, you can do six and 10. I would start off with two to three rounds at first. So go eight, 10, eight, and 12. And then if you want to, if you feel pretty good afterwards, add into it and then go from there. So this was another workout by BU Fitness. So hopefully this, uh, this is a lot of fun for you guys. If you need any uh, help, have questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Definitely like the page, like, subscribe if you're really enjoying the content here. And uh, check out my uh, website and Facebook page. It's bufitness.org. So definitely check it out. And I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend.